Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to another edition of MacBreak Studio. Today, we have Mark Spencer who's going to show us how to grow our own. Grow our own. <laughs> Aren't you or something? Uh, well, yeah, sort of growing, growing vines. Okay, growing, growing vines, vines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, virtual vines. Virtual vines, make your own garden. Now, people were asking this. I, you were yeah. saying earlier that people were emailing, please show us how to make vines grow. Well, you think about it. There's a lot of motion graphics out there that have growing tendrils and, and growing flowers and things organic, very yes. organic looking. Right. Things like crawling across the screen. and Yes. You know, yeah. So it. the question is like, how can I make growing vines in motion? I actually want to know how to make growing vines. All right. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of ideas is to sort of point you in a direction. Excellent. Uh, different ways to do this. So here we are in motion. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you some existing stuff in the library that you can use on its own or just as a as starting, a starting point. Place. Yeah. yeah. So if I go to the library, and then in library, I'm going to go down to the content folder. And there is a huge, in fact, 1,348 uh, different items here. As long as you've downloaded the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. As long as you yeah. download the content. So mm -hmm. in here, where I want to go to is a thing called ornaments, and we go down. It's alphabetical, and uh, why is it not here? Is there, a search there it is. Drawings. Okay. Sorry, drawings. <laughs> Sorry, my my mistake. So it's the, ornaments the, within the drawings yeah, folder. In the drawings right. category, there are these different ornaments. You were kind of scared there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, oh my god, it's not here. Oh. Um, so there's a bunch of different things here, and these are all animated, and uh, they're all created with shapes. So if you click on them, you get a little preview of their animation. Yeah, if you click on one, you get a little preview of the animation. But better than that, let's just bring that guy uh, into our project and play it here. Okay. Nice. There's a growing thingy. Yep, so a growing thingy. So so immediately, there's your there's your growing vines, you're done, right. right? You can just grab one of these, and there's dozens of these. Yeah, I see that. Now the cool thing about these is, you might think this is a movie, uh, but it's not a movie. This is, you know, a uh, built out of motion components, so you can break it apart and use it the way that you want so to. So if you open it up, then there are the pieces. Yeah. In fact, one way to open this up, if I just click the disclosure triangle, it only opens up this level. Sure. But if I hold the option key down, this works in the finder it as well. Up. It opens everything. up everything. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to move my uh, cursor between two layers and drag up just so we can kind of see everything you can in there. see everything now. So these are all uh, paint strokes, which are special instances of a shape. Right. And each of them has a right on that animates them on. So all these are are paint strokes. And they're uh, all connected together to. You know, yeah, and they're all. I can, I can pick, pick one and just move it over. That's right. all that is. I see. Okay? And these paint strokes, you might like, well, how did you make a paint stroke that has different thicknesses to it? If you right click on a paint stroke and choose uh, stroke, you'll get small. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see what's here. Uh, we get these little points on the control points where you can control the thickness of the stroke that you make. I'll undo that. So you can have very specific control over uh, each paint stroke to give it different thickness. And that's right. how each of these are created. Right. Okay. And then a little write on behavior that animates them on. So you can take this thing and break it apart, just use pieces of it in your own work, duplicate it, um, replicate it, and do great things with, with something like this very, very quick and easily. So that's just one example of something that's built completely out of Different shapes. components and shapes. Yeah, yeah. and you, obviously you can draw your own shapes with the shape tools down here and do it as well, but it's nice to start with some existing pieces that are already built for you. Uh, another example, just let me delete that, and just to give you another example that's built a little bit differently than that is this one called 33. And I'll show you the reason I want to show you this. Let me bring it in and play it. Pretty. Okay, so that's really like a whole growing Sorry, flower. Yes. It's kind of nice, right? So and we can even just take the whole thing. I'm going to hold shift and option and just make the whole thing bigger. Shapes are vectors, so you can scale them as big as you want. This is an HD project, so you can just make it nice as big. Are they fixed resolution? <laughs> uh, there's no such thing here with the shapes, so right. you can uh, make them as big as you want. <laughs> I'm going to option click again to open everything in here. And check this out. Here we actually have a bunch of replicators. replicators. Yeah. Yeah, that create, see this nice fan here? Actually, let me just grab this and move it over. And that's created by replicating one paint stroke. And then uh, it's scaling open over time. So with that replicator selected, we can choose the sequence replicator behavior that's applied to it and go to the inspector and see that what this is doing is animating the scale and the opacity of each of those shapes as they animate onto the screen. You can see that kind of build out. 
And from here, you can change things like the, the spread of how many of them animate at once. I'll, I'll increase that so that you can see more of them animate at once or fewer. Once you sort of understand the basics of using the replicator and the sequence replicator behavior, right. then you can build your own. But this is an, another instance where you can start with a pre-built thing and uh, then build your own growing vines out of it. Okay. That's right, the different components. And you just, you know. Yeah, and assemble what you want. So um, the idea here is use a preset to start with and use shapes and, replicators, and replicators, replicators to be able to do that. Right. Now you're like, okay, that's great, but I really, really, really want to do, do my, my own. own. Yeah. I want to do my own. So um, <laughs> th that's fine. And I just have a little background I've thrown in. This, this slate red is also from the library. Well, that you need something for the vines to attach themselves to. Yeah. A nice so, substrate. A sub what? Substrate. A substrate. Yeah. All right. If you say so, a substrate. Here's my substrate. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the space bar and just drag down a little to make some space above it because I want a little vine to come down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the Bezier tool in the toolbar here to draw that. And I'm just going to click drag to drag out a few little points. So I've got my little, my little vine. Okay. Yep, there it is. I'll hit return. And by default, it fills it and uses whatever colors the last person chose. So I don't know who was using this machine last, but um, wow. It's a very, very <laughs> Picasso-esque vine yes. right now. So I'm going to turn off the fill, just have an outline, maybe increase the width here. And then um, if I want to change the end, and I want the end to be thinner, right? The trick is I can't adjust the width right now because this uh, isn't the right type of stroke. So what I want to do is go to the shape inspector. And here we see the brush type is set to solid. The brush type needs to be set to an airbrush for these next steps to work. That's kind of the key component there. So I set that to an airbrush. And now uh, if I, I'm also going to, let me do one more thing. When it's set to an airbrush, I'm going to open the brush profile and drag this white tag over. See how it's making it more solid? Yeah, I was it's, say a that. it's a little soft. It's, yeah. yeah, this makes it more solid looking. I'll bring it over there. Now I'm going to right click on it and choose stroke. And this gives me uh, points that I can adjust the thickness. Oh, so I there, see. so now I can have an end in a nice thin, Looks a little, little bit tendril. more like a little tendril there. Color's not quite right. Let's make it kind of a dark, maybe a dark brown, something like that. Okay, so we have something. Let's say that's the look we like. I'll hit Shift S, but I want to animate it onto the screen. This so is where the behavior comes in. The behavior comes in here. So library, behaviors, and I'm in the shape behaviors. And the one I want is already selected here, sequence paint. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you've ever worked with sequence replicator behavior or the sequence text behavior. It's very similar in terms of this. It's very it's similar. similar. It's, it's similar. <laughs> it's sequencing out a set of operations on yes. the object. Exactly. So let's put it onto this uh, paint stroke. And let's trim its out point so it doesn't last for the whole project and set a play range out point. And now what I want to do, I'll go to the inspector and choose what to animate. The cool thing about this guy, here's the where you choose what parameter to sure. animate. In the pop-up menu, we've got one called width. Width, yeah. So I want to animate the width of this thing over time. So I'll select that. And what I want to do is a sequencing. I want to go from. From, from, from its zero. zero. It's yeah, so I'm dragging the width to zero. So it's going to animate the width of this thing from zero to, to full size, starting from the top and working its way down. That's what the sequencing part is about, along the stroke. So if I now play, you can see the kind of width animating on. That's nice. Now, you can also see something happening. See at the very little, beginning, kind of like little dots. Dabs. See little dabs there going on? Yes. Let's zoom in a little bit. So the reason for that is, let's go back to our shape. That just has to do with our shape with the um, spacing between the dabs, OK? As it's drawing them on, every shape is made up of little, little separate, dabs, separate dabs. And they're being revealed. So what we can do is decrease the spacing here. There we go. And now we have a solid line. OK, so now if we play that, we've got a nice little animated tendril. And I actually like to make these very slow um, uh, working so it kind of slowly animates onto the screen and comes down. Now I have an example. I actually did this for a project where uh, I animated um, some growing vines for a show. And I'll just show you what this looks like here where we've, we've got a wall, and this there was actually a video being projected in the middle, but then we had vines growing down. See from the top? I see that. Very slowly growing down, and then on top of the vines, and the reason it's very slow is because this was a sort of a animation going on in the middle as these grow. So the vines grew, and then I used more paint strokes that used leaves as the dabs. So the leaves come down and fill in the vines after the vines come down. And after the leaves come in, we have little um, flowers, bougainvillea flowers. Right. Yeah. So I scanned some flowers and made them paint strokes. Do they pop on? Paint tabs, and they will see them starting to come down oh, now. Nice. So they're each kind of slowly popping, working their way down the screen to fill up the screen. So all of this is done with 
paint strokes and I the sequence well, paint that, behavior. I, I see a tutorial just that. Right. I mean, yeah, it's kind of pretty, right? It's very pretty. Nice and slow. I mean, I want to make a nice growing yeah. vine thing with. And you can. It's basically take uses the same technique I just showed you here, but with the addition of using um, some custom brushes. Right. So that's some different ways that you can build some growing vines. Excellent. All right. So you can find more information about how to work with motion at uh, ribbletraining.com. Oh, in fact, there is a. I have a tutorial specifically on working with paint. Uh, shapes, paint strokes, and masks, masks. That, that talks about this kind of stuff. Excellent. Out. So I want to thank you for uh, watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. Join us on our next episode. Thanks for watching.